All right, uh, good after, afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our uh, signing day press conference. Uh, this day is always real special, and uh, uh, once again, it was like an early Christmas present. A lot of good vibes in the building today, and, and the coaching staff did uh, a great job with uh, a lot of things you'll probably see on social media tomorrow. But uh, to talk about uh, this year's recruits, I'd like to get it started with our head coach, Derek Mason, who will have some opening comments and then uh, be open for your questions. First of all, I want to say sorry I'm late. I was upstairs uh, talking to Balin Woodman, uh, and our, our kicker in this year's signing uh, class, and extremely excited about this class. Um, I've titled this class the 2025 Middle Tennessee High School Draft uh, class because I do believe now that high school uh, recruiting uh, now is much like the draft. These are your first round draft picks. These are your developmental players. And these are the guys that you sort of build your base and foundation around. So uh, truly excited about that. But it's been an incredible day uh, for the Blue Raiders. And just to take you back just a little bit, um, when you come on board and you go through the idea of what recruiting looks like uh, in that first year, it's really a zero year right? Because it happens so fast. And really what you're trying to do is just make sure you put the pieces together. We were just looking at it today and our thoughts were out of the 15 freshmen that we took a year ago or, or 18 freshmen, uh, we hit on 15 of them. That's pretty good, you know, for, for a short time. And this class, we truly believe that every one of these young men, okay, will have a chance to impact our roster. Uh, some earlier than others, but every one of them have the talent, the ability, and and really the skill set uh, to to really be dynamic players in Conference USA. Um, as you look at this class, you know, ten student athletes from the state of Tennessee, right? That's 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 us, you know, recruiting us. That's us being in our backyard. That's us being in our state. That's us trying to put arms around our borders uh, a little bit and just look at, you know, players from our community um, and who played well. And when you look at this class in its totality, um, it's probably a pretty highly ranked class. I haven't looked at the rankings, but I felt like every one of these young men were quality players because most of these, got, most of these student athletes had an opportunity to play in the postseason. Okay, and that's what you want. You want winners. You want guys man, who know how to play football. Um, they understand what winning football looks like because that's what you build off of. Um, young men who know how to dig deep and, and, and actually work hard. Um, as I look at this class too, man, we had uh, three student athletes from the state of Florida, one from Alabama, one from Georgia, and one from Wisconsin of all places. Okay, um, You know, a kicker from Wisconsin. So when we get late in the year and we're looking at putting, uh, you know, points on the board. Uh, weather doesn't play a factor for us. So I, I, I think that's a pretty good combination. You know, warm all year until you get towards the end. But um, as I look, nine offensive players, uh, five defensive players, uh, one special team uh, player uh, being a kicker. This group is, again, I think balanced. It's, it, it has athleticism, it has size, it has length, uh, and they've been productive. When we went through this draft, or this draft class, I can't say draft class, when we went through this draft class, we wanted uh, four characteristics to drive this class. Uh, and it started with character and toughness. We wanted a, you know, young men of great character who were tough. Um, tough mentally, tough physically, you know, good students, and I think that's what we got. Uh, secondly, we wanted production. You know, it, football is a production-based game. And so for us nowadays, you really need guys who show production. And when you look through the accolades and the stats of these student athletes, I mean, they've all been productive. We talked about talent being third, right? Because um, if hard work, if, if hard work is, is, is manifested through talent, we believe, man, that we're going to have something to work off of. And so talent was third. And then the fourth thing that we had to ask ourselves in this class, can they help us win? And that's, that's what you have to do nowadays. You have to look uh, at your class and say, okay, what do you want? Do they, do they uh, categorize or, or show you these four things uh, for Blue Raider Nation? And we set those things a year ago. Uh, and hopefully, uh, as, these, as these seeds grow, man, you'll see exactly what they're capable of. But I'm excited. I mean, it's a dynamic class for us. Um, we kept it small because we feel like 
um, there's going to be more out there. We got safeties in this class. Uh, we, we looked at corners, but we didn't want to reach. And I think you have to be careful nowadays about reaching. There's so much volume out there that you got to get it right. So don't reach. Uh, and for us, there's still work to do. But with that, I'll open it up for questions. Coach, if you go through some of these players that y'all have signed and, you know, going 247 or rivals or on three, you can see that Middles won battles for a lot of these players against peer institutions, sort of, you know, teams that we're competing with on the field day to day. How important is winning battles like that and, and, and finding players that, that other teams want too that, that you want in your program? Well, again, uh, most teams want guys that win. When you went through, you know, a lot of these guys win. Their programs win. And, you know, you can't just look at winning programs. You have to look at the player themselves, right? But I, I, I truly believe when you look at some of the upper echelon teams in this conference or teams that have been considered upper echelon teams, we had to battle and fight even in our own backyard, you know, because a lot of people have started to come to Tennessee because Tennessee is such a fertile, uh, like, recruiting place, especially middle Tennessee. And so uh, we feel good about those battles. We felt like – uh, we did a good job of showing them how they fit into uh, who we are and what we do and what middle has to offer, whether we talk about degree programs, the city uh, itself, in proximity uh, to, to, to cities that, that give them resources that other places don't. You touched on this a little bit in the opening statement, but the full year of recruiting versus, you know, the really quick, you know, speed dating that you had to do when you first got hired. Yeah. Um, how did that, you know, sort of affect the recruiting process for the whole staff and the relationships you were able to build with these guys over the course of a year? We saw most of these student athletes, you know, four or five times, right? I mean, you, you camp with them. You see them at a junior day, you generally get them to a camp, and then you have, you have an opportunity to get them to games. And obviously it's easier when they're closer to come, to come watch you. But – Really what we ask our student athletes to look at is, you know, watch us play, look at the schemes, and can you see yourself playing in these schemes? How are you going to impact this program? And I, I, I think part of that was a huge sell for these student athletes. I, I believe they love the system. They love the coaches. They love, you know, where we're going in terms of facilities. Uh, but it's all about relationships. And I think through the relationship process, uh, it wasn't just about the student athletes. Their families felt comfortable too, and that's huge. Coach, you know, what was different about this or how was it affected by the fact that the transfer portal wasn't open already this year as opposed to last year and in previous years? You know what? It, it wasn't as convoluted, right? You weren't, you weren't trying to, you know, mix, you know, two, two sort of genres of players that you're looking at. You know, you were able to keep the main thing the main thing. So uh, if we talk about the way recruiting looks in my mind right now, as we ended the season – Okay, we went through the idea of, of retention, and that's where the transfer portal comes in, right? So as soon as the season is done, you have to meet with your players, and it becomes about uh, what, what players are going to be kept, what players are going to enter the portal, and then there's your signing class, and that class has already been cemented a little bit through the re recruiting relationships over the last year. And what we go to now as you finish your signing class is really free agency. So th this model – is, is truly the model of the future in terms of what it looked like. I mean, looks like a high school draft class, uh, the retention of players, uh, and the ones that you feel can help your program and, and, and are going to lead you forward, and then free agency. So it, it's, a, it's a different frontier and a different world that we're in, but I think MTSU is poised because we've planned for this for a long time. So credit to uh, you know, Chris Massaro, Dr. McPhee, and, and, and the people around our athletics program for seeing the vision and really working towards where we are right now. And, and with what you're losing in the receiving end, can you talk about the receivers and the, the really talented tight end you signed today? Yeah, you know, in losing, guys, man, you, you look at Holden Willis, it's, it's, it's now become like money ball because when you look at somebody like Holden Willis, you know, you, you, you can't go get Holden Willis. What you have to do is replace the production, right? And, like, that's where I truly believe MTSU is going to be poised to, to, to attract, you know, student athletes uh, with skill sets that are similar. Uh, is one player going to get it done like Holden? Absolutely not. It may be two. So, like, we're probably going to have to go get two players. But I think we were, we're poised to do that. When you talk about the receiver room, obviously, you know, the big hit was Amari Kelly uh, and everybody understanding that. But when you develop players, uh, you know, like, that's going to happen.
that's the wave of the future right now is development and retention as best you can. Amari wanted to test the waters, and that's good for him, right? But that also gives us an opportunity, like, as well. Um, nobody's going to be able to – I don't believe anybody in our conference is going to be able to get Amari Kelly, okay? And that's what you, you, you say to yourself. We're not going to let anybody in our conference go get Amari Kelly. If Amari Kelly goes someplace, he's going to go someplace, man, that, that, that gives him an opportunity to do something a little different. That's great because now that allows us to bring in the next Amari Kelly, right? Uh, there's plenty of guys that saw what Amari did, and, you know, he only had five receptions in coming here. We saw the production this year. It just opens that window. And, and believe me, we've, we've been receiving a lot of calls, uh, a lot of hits on social media because, again, people want to see if they can be that next guy. So – it's a it's a fun place to be in. It's worrisome too, right? Because it seems like it's more transactional uh, than it is transformational. But I do believe if you build relationships the right way, if you can if you can talk to student athletes and 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 be proud of their journey and then wish them well, you know, when they receive their opportunities, it's only going to help you, you know, as you continue to go through this thing and that this thing that's a new frontier for us. Yeah, Coach, looking at the class in totality, what are what's a guy or two that you know you really stands out to you and why? They all do, right? Um, I, I, if you want to talk to me up front, I think, I mean, it's a line of scrimmage game. starts up front. Uh, and I think when you look at those three linemen, you know, Larkin being able to come in mid-year, you know, which is good for him. You know, I, I, I look at Otto, you know, and where Otto is, like, in this process and Bo. Those young men will get a chance to get up here in the summer, but size, athleticism, when you watch the tape, man, it jumps off the tape. You know, they're big, they're physical. Um, but Kyle's probably going to have a, a, a little bit of an advantage because he gets a spring, right? And if you're going to be a high school lineman, it doesn't mean that you're going to compete, but it may it may allow you to be in the depth chart, right? So that that's, that's something, like, for us that I appreciate. Archie Roseman, the fifth. <laughs> He's a big block of sender, isn't he? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've seen him on game days, but if you haven't, he blocks out the sun, right? You know, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's one of those that we've wanted for a while, right? And I think it just builds on what's in the room. You know, when you look at guys like, you know, DeMonte, who's older, but when you look at A.B., you look at Sha'Kai, you know, you look at Felix Hickson, you know, you look at like Aiden, we're young and going to get better. Right. So I, I, I just truly believe it starts up front and we didn't reach. Uh, you know, when you look at Darnell Malpress, uh, he's slight, but boy, he's dynamic on the edge. Right. And we want a little more length. And so we 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 get some of that. Um, so I like that. Uh, the receivers, <laughs> uh, Neil Clifton, he can flat out play. Hubbard, he can flat out go get it. Speedster. Uh, we, we, we wanted to be thicker, a little more, a little more dynamic. If you're going to be small, be thick, right? Be dynamic. Uh, we needed that. We needed somebody to be electric in a return game, okay? And that's why, you know, Hubbard's a, a great fit because he can play inside or outside. Neo, uh, to me, um, just gives you I mean, the length and the, the playability that I'm used to because he can get big on you. He can run around you. He's got a great sense of running routes. So... I like what that is. The quarterback, Stanley, he's going to be a good dude now. Like, when you look at Stanley, like, and what he can do and what he is, you know, 50 touchdowns over the last, you know, two years, he's had, he's had a lot of production. Right now, I think he was a, the Northern Florida, you know, uh, offensive player of the year, uh, you know, still in the playoffs right now, uh, you know, and he comes from a program that's pretty dang good. Those two safeties, those two safeties, Lock Kennedy, you know, man, and, and where we're going. I look at, like, right now, I looked at, you know, Locke's numbers earlier, and I was going through and just looking at, like, what this class, like, looked like for us. You know, Locke is long, athletic. I know he went to he, he went to a BGA first, but then IMG, and then came back. He, he was a different player when he came back, and, and you see how dynamic he is. You know, Noble, that dude's, I mean, his program, they won the state title. Unfortunately, they were disqualified like this year, uh, like they were 9-1 and one and didn't get a chance to get to the postseason because of an ineligible player. But they were probably going back to, to, to repeat. Both of those dudes are long, right? I mean, I, I like the idea of getting guys somewhat like, you know, I, I can't say that he's like that, that he's like Reed or he's like Kevin, 
but those dudes have those qualities, right? And I think the the length, the range, the athleticism, that's what we're looking for, man. We need physical guys that can get the ball out of the air. You know, guys built like Xavier, right? So if we can add to that with young guys, we feel like we're, we're moving in the right direction. Uh, as you mentioned, 10 guys that you signed from the state of Tennessee, just how important is it to keep your in-state talent in-house? It's huge, right? Um, I look at the last two years. I mean, we we scholarshiped a, a young walk-on by the name of Corey Smith out of Oakland, and Corey's gonna be dynamic. You know, I'm I love to see Corey playing next to Micah Smith, right? Uh, you you you, th those guys have been really productive in their careers. But you know, as I look, like these guys are really good players. These guys have played, uh, you know in-state title games, man. They've had the opportunity to to play on big stage, man. They've been, uh, you know, in the highest levels of football. And I'm I'm just looking at, like, what Middle Tennessee is. Uh, the ball is getting better and better. I went out to watch high school football this year, and I was just, like, amazed. Uh, I remember when I came here in 2014, I thought it was pretty good and there were pockets. Now I'm starting to see it everywhere, right? So I think from top to bottom, you can go from Shelbyville to North Nashville, and you see lots of talent, okay? so. It, it, it's to keep this talent home uh, for us. Uh, it's it's a fresh start or a good start to what we hope is a bright future. When I look through the list, I think you've offered every one, single one of these guys in person, whether it was a junior day or summer visit, like Darnell. You talked about the character aspect. Was that kind of what you were looking for when you offer these guys in person like that? Well, yeah, I, I think character is truly like manifested in every part of what you do. Our coaches had a chance to see these guys work in camp. We've had a chance to, you know, see these guys in person. We've had a chance to go to their schools and talk to uh, people. Like when I go to schools, I don't talk to the coach because the coach will tell you everything that's good. I talk to the lady in the cafeteria. You know, I talk to the nurse. I talk to the lady at the front desk to find out who they really are. I, I mean, I want that type of information. And then uh, what, what we did this year, that's a little different. Like I believe in we're going to do it for every uh, student athlete that comes on this campus. It wasn't just about the uh, the pomp and circumstance of what recruiting is. You get them nowadays, and like everybody wants to, you know, go here, see this, do that. I mean, you're you're trying to please folks and young people. To me, do they love football? Get on the board, okay? Let's 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 see some X's and O's, okay? Draw draw a pro formation, draw a slot formation. Um, talk me through um, your your defensive calls, your offensive calls. I mean, let's forget all the fluff. When you come to college, it's gonna be football, okay? That's that's gonna be a huge part of what you do. I know you I know you can do the academics, but when we start talking football, I don't want to hear. I well, I, I don't quite get this. Hey, coaches, that's your room. You better recruit to your room what you want in your room because you're responsible for. It. I'm gonna hold you responsible for it. And that's just the way it works. And I thought all these guys had high football IQ, high football IQ. And that's cool. That's what we're looking for. That, that's the character piece to me. Because if you don't love football, then why are you here? Uh, when you look at like Micah Smith at Innsworth and he has Dylan Sanders come in, get that collegiate mind. Is that something that impressed you with Micah it and did. his growth this season? It did. It did. I, I mean, again, I, football junkie. I mean, like Micah plays with his – his siblings, and does ball along with school. I like that. You know, he, he plays little video games, but he spends more time on the ball. You know, he's asking us questions about, you know, two back fits, one back fits, walking outside the box. Okay, coach, how are you going to handle split backs? Uh, you know, what, what, what's your idea of, of you know, man, blitzing, blitzing uh, you know, man, two back sets or split back sets? I mean, man, just true football. I'm like, okay. You know, I mean, most of the time, man, they just want to know, okay, man, can I, can I have, like, jersey two, you know? I mean, can, can, can I have a pair of cleats? You know, I want them in white with blue stripes on them. Yeah. You know, that, that's, that's just the way it is nowadays. None of these kids ask for that. I mean, it was all ball, and Michael was just a ball machine. Like, every time we got on the phone, all ball, all ball. You talked about the high school talent in the state continuing to get better. Yep. I feel like especially this class in the trenches, whether it's offense or defensive line, and you really took advantage of that this class. What did you see in the in-state trench class that led you to pushing for so many guys? I mean, that was just uh, – it, it's good football, 
uh, happening. But I, I, I tell you what, you you have to be not careful nowadays because not everybody like truly loves it. But I, I've I've seen more. We're starting to see more development in the trenches. We're starting to see like coaches doing more. It used to be the Brentwood uh, like academies of the world. It used to be like the Oaklands of the world. It used to be like five or six schools. Now it's everybody. They're doing a really good job of developing young men. I'm talking about in the run game. Guys are on the boards and on the sleds. Guys are getting more uh, individual work when it comes to the big man camps. Okay, and they're getting more exposure to 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 you know different levels of coaching. So I think. We just got to be careful about all the personalized coaching because I think guys can overwork themselves and find themselves being becoming injury prone because they don't take any time off. But I think these high school coaches are doing such a good job within their own programs that for me it's been easier to like look at some of the high school practices and be like, <laughs> he, he, he can do it. And then you see it transfer to games. So it's that part of it's been easier in the, to, to actually see as you go to programs all across the state. When you look, you bring in the two safeties. You kind of envision uh, Kamari Hall as more that star nickel position, whatever you want to call it. Kamari's a nickel. Uh, you know, I, I know it may say safety on the publications, but when you watch him, uh, that that little dude finds a ball. Okay, I mean, he. Some some people just have a knack for the ball. Um, I coach a young man in Stanford by the name of uh, Uswan Amanon, and he was a former running back. And we flipped him over his senior year. And, you know, Uswab was just just instinctive around the ball. He was like Honey Badger. Like, any time – I mean, he ran so hard to the ball that he just found it. Well, that's that's what Kamari is. I mean, he just finds the ball. And uh, sometimes you worry about small guys, right? But when I look at, like, his ability to get the ball and get the – I mean, get to the ball and get the ball out, he's just got that knack. Some guys just punch, they rake. Okay, or they can just find it, and that's what he is. He he can just find it. And by the way, Uswa Amanat only played nickel for a year, um, or actually for half the season. Uh, he wound up being MVP of the Rose Bowl, uh, man, man, because that dude just did exactly what he had done all year, which is find the football, and he found it on the biggest stage. And that's what this one reminds me of. Okay, Kamara reminds me of Uswa. Same 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 foot quickness, uh, same football IQ. He's played a lot of football for a high school. Uh, you look at some of these guys that were recruited at several positions like Neil Clifton and Archie Roseman and Michael Smith DJ. Was that versatility, especially guys that played both sides in an era where maybe you don't see that as much, and especially in the bigger schools, was that something that stood out to you? Yeah, other than quarterback, uh, a guy's, a guy's got to be super dynamic to only play one position, right? Uh, like Rocky, you know, Rocky was a pretty dynamic running back. He got hurt early in the season. But, you know, he, he's pretty good at what he does. Um, you want to see these guys play both sides of the ball. Now, some programs don't let you, but m most of your good high school players do, right? They play both sides, other than the quarterback position sometimes. So, yeah, do we look for it? Yeah, because it, it gives us more information. So, like, the more information you have, the easier the decision is on toughness, playability. You know, do they take plays off? Do they like it? You know, what's the skill set? You're always looking for things to, to – to me, I'm looking for reasons not to take a player and, and not, not, not reasons to take a player. I'm looking for more reasons not to take a player because once you got them, you got them. Uh, on a personal note, you recruited Neo's older brother when you were at Vanderbilt with Nate. Yeah. What was that experience like getting to re-recruit the Clifton family? Yeah, you, you know, Mama Clifton, I, I know you're out there. <laughs> yeah, man, she is, man, she's a special lady. She's poured a lot into those boys, right? Uh, and I should say men now, because Nate's at Nate's at USC. He left Vandy, went to USC, uh, you know, via the portal. Um, you know, had a great career. Um, it, it's I've coached a lot of brothers. I've coached the Adingbo brothers. I've coached the Smith brothers. Uh, you know, I, I can go back. I've, I've probably coached seven sets of brothers, right? Like in my time. And you know, parents. I guess parents think that we do a pretty good job with the first one, so they don't mind sending the second one. So that, that's, that's a good thing. Nate had a really good career. Um, he was the last guy that I took in that class. And, you know, we, it, it was the difference between walking on and taking him as a scholarship player. And I took him as a scholarship player because he just played hard. And he developed himself into a really good player. Um, Neo, Neo's a little different than his brother. His skill set's already there, right? Like, Nate still had to be built out. Um, Neo works as hard as his brother, though. So 
uh, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, and I think it comes from, like, mom. I think it comes from the home training. Like, mom is, is a good lady who believes in nothing but hard work. She's their biggest cheerleader, their biggest fan, but she's she's their biggest critic, too, when it comes to the academics, and I think that's important. Uh, Coach, talking to recruits, they rave about your pitch to legit let guys come in to compete for spots early. Yeah. Why, why is that an emphasis for you to let the young guys get theirs? Yeah, you know, to to – to me, it goes back to the time that I I, I had coming out of uh, the NFL uh, to Stanford. We had to play young guys. We had to because we didn't have the quality of depth that everybody else had. So we had to play our young guys. And to me, what I found is that young guys become old guys. You know, we saw it this year with uh, you know Anthony Bynum. We saw it with Shakai. You know, like those are young guys that'll be old guys next year. Guys that played a lot of snaps. You know. Um, I, to me, it's not a sell, it's the truth. Here's the thing, if you're gonna recruit a guy, what you tell him is this, okay? In college football now, you got a short window of time. It used to be like two years of development, right? Well, now it's not. Because if you're not producing, there's schools across the country that'll put you in the portal. And that's a fact. So don't spend your time looking in a rear view mirror. Spend your time looking forward, work hard, be the best that you can be. And you know what, if you can get it now, get it now because those experiences don't, don't do anything but make you better. Um, at this point, do you know who's going to early enrollee next semester? Yeah, the, the two early enrollees are, um, you know, Stanley, uh, Anderson Lofton, quarterback, you know, which is outstanding for us, and, and really Kyle Larkin. Those were the, the, the two guys. And we, we, we didn't want a ton of uh, mid-year enrollees because we knew that we were going to go uh, through – actually two free agency, okay, to look at filling some gaps and some holes that we believe need to be addressed uh, in this 25 uh, group in order for us to move forward. On that note, on free agency, yeah. what, what are those gaps? What are those holes you're looking to fill in this period right now and, you know, over this next month when that really starts to heat up? Yeah, I think it's, you know, I mean, some of those that you've seen, uh, like over the season, man, we talk about O-line, right? Uh, there's some guys, man, that we think we can build around uh, in retention, but we need to go get offensive linemen, and we will. And you know, if you're out there, I mean, you want to come play here. You want you want the opportunity to get the reps. You want the opportunity, man, man, to play with a really good quarterback. Uh, like th this is this is where you want to be. So uh, I'm excited about the O line piece. Um, we'll go get a couple of tight ends that I think uh, fit exactly where we want to go. And I, I think that's going to be fairly easy for us because we've had a lot of uh, people reaching out. Same thing on the receiver end. Uh, we we want to be dynamic. Uh, and so we're going to go be dynamic like in this. As I look at it, we're going to go get some corners uh, like on the edges because I think uh, we, we didn't set edges well enough. We didn't play well enough on the corners uh, for our liking. So uh, we want older, uh, more mature, productive players on the corners. Uh, in my mind, and then we're gonna we're gonna look at rush ends uh, as well and uh, address some of the pass rush because I think a rush and coverage have to work together. And uh, if you can address the corners, you can get some depth in the safety, and you can rush off the edge. I think we we've got some pretty good ideas of what we're gonna do in the middle. I think the only position group we didn't hit on in this class is sort of the, the two running backs that you signed, both you know really local guys. Yeah. Uh, what do you like about the two of them and, and sort of their rushing styles? You know. Uh, you know, I mean, Rocky obviously he's got a he's he's got a little bit of time, right? Because he he's he's going to be on the shelf, uh, you know, with recovery. And but he's he short area quickness, good hands out of the backfield, can go to the distance. DJ, uh, he he he's a distance machine. Every time he touches the ball, he can go house, he can go yard. You know, he's got he's got you know ten three speed, uh, you know, what you like. Both of these guys have frames to be two hundred pound backs. You know, we don't want to be small. Okay, uh, we we talked about that too. Um, we never got a chance to see AC this year, but I mean, if you ask people, okay, within the program, they, I mean, Jaquel's the bell cow. You know, you 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 look at it, Jaquel Middlebrook is, is, I mean, him and Flip are the bell cows, right? But them dudes, them them dudes gonna be looking over their shoulder a little bit, you know, with AC. But I think these young dudes, uh, you know, whether you talk about DJ and and Rocky. They're the future, that's for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Got it. Thanks.